Hello everybody and welcome back. This is Skidude and it is the long awaited 0.6.1 new features video. Now, the holiday season has been quite busy for me so I haven't been able to start putting out the new tutorials for 0.6. Um, but I will start this weekend as you are watching this video now and I will try to get it uh, probably one a week. I know there are a lot of things to hit so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of very quickly brush over them. Um, this isn't meant to be a full tutorial video, so if you don't, I guess, follow along as quickly as I'm going, um, I will be releasing specific tutorials in the future. Anyway, let's get started. So the first thing I want to go over, let's start up here in the top area. Now you can see there are a couple new buttons here, um, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of these. And the first one you're going to see is this folder icon over here that has a plus sign next to it. Now the cool thing about this, um, a lot of people have been posting facial rigs, uh, facial rig tutorials and other um, Minimator files for you to download on the forums. If you haven't checked that out, go ahead and check it out. But it kind of was hard to implement them in animations you already had. And so what this button up here, the folder with the plus icon, allows you to merge animations together. So let me just go ahead and show you this. I'm just going to go ahead and add a character here, Mr. Steve. And we'll give him two keyframes. And let's go ahead and just make him walk. Alright. Create walking animation. Alright, and we're good to go. Um, I guess real quick. While that's going, let me show you that. Uh, David did update the walking animation to show bendy limbs. So now the uh, knees bend and the arms bend with his walk. So anyway, so you've got this big animation and say, you know what, I want to add another animation that I've done before and let's, uh, let's show you how to do that. It's pretty easy. You just go up here, click the import animation button brings up this file here. I'm going to go back to my Minimator 0.5.2 folder into my animations and let's bring in um, let's bring in the skeleton gun and voila if you look down here on the timeline all of the keyframes are there for Mr. Skeleton Gun so if I go ahead and press play Steve is still walking and the, the skeleton is shooting his guns um, now there are a couple things that don't come in uh, if you change the ground to a custom thing those do not come in uh, actually let me let me pull one that has schematics and we'll go ahead and test that out uh, animations cooking episode it's gonna take a minute because it has to load the schematics um, but I'm pretty sure it is going to load the schematics because that is the thing it's telling me it's doing so there you go um, this is actually a cooking animation I'm working on that I'll probably have to redo because of the bending limbs, but no big deal. So you've got my original animation, I brought in the skeleton animation, and now we have a cooking animation. So if I press play here, it brought in all the schematics and everything, um, everything like that. And I'm only getting 44% frame rate because there is a lot of stuff going on. Um, anyway, that is probably one of the coolest new features in this is being able to merge your animations. So if you want to set up a couple, maybe a character running or flying or whatever, and you know you always want to add that in your animations, just save that in the file in the animation alone. So for example, Steve walking, um, and then I can just pull that into any animation I want, change the skin to the one I need, or whatever your needs may be. So that is the import animation button. So let's just go ahead and get a new animation so we're not lagging things up pull this down. Now let's move over to a new button here on the top and that is the little wrench up here at the top which is for the settings. If I go ahead and click on this you're gonna see the panel here on the right hand side does change. Now there are a couple of, uh, new settings here. Well I guess these are all new settings because this wasn't here before but you can turn off help so that means when I mouse over something you don't get that little black box in the top left. If I turn it back on you're gonna see that black box in the top left. Um, there are now three different AVI recorders, so if you get an error with your rendering um, when you go to export it as a movie, go ahead, come into the settings, and try out the other two. There are three here, so hopefully one of these will work for you. Next in line, we have the interface color here. So instead of pressing F12, 
and the old versions you can now change it like that uh, let's go ahead and go back to gray so things are easier to see um, you have view distance so if you look at the tooltip on the top left it says change distance at which graphics are cut off so for example let me just turn this down you saw the sky kind of change a little bit and now you're going to see the ground come in this is similar to the view distance in um, Minecraft but this is also going to help with your with some people's lag that they get running this program um, if you just turn down your view distance if you're just working in a little specific area here with an animation turn down your view distance and it's going to save you a lot of a lot of time or well, it's going to save you some lag so we're just going to right click that and reset it to the normal now if you're also getting more lag you can also turn on poor shading and texture and interpolation now texture interpolation actually has two two features um, it can decrease lag let me just go ahead and show you this um, so this is just the normal size skin if I go ahead and go back here in, into settings turn on texture interpolation you can see it kinda makes things blurry and you can say well that's kind of a stupid thing to do if I don't have lag why would I want to turn that on and this actually does help with your HD um, your HD texture packs and uh, let me pull one in real quick and I will show you how that's gonna help with your HD textures alright so I had to go find an HD texture uh, file I realized I didn't have any on my computer from a texture pack so let me go ahead and show you what the texture interpolation actually does so I'm gonna go and go ahead and add an item and we're going to do it with a stone axe now this is just your normal stone axe and if I go ahead and go in here to the settings and turn on texture interpolation it's gonna blur it out which may look kinda silly but when you use HD graphics it actually makes them look a lot smoother so let me go ahead and show you that <gasps> that was a long sentence anyway um, items so I'm going to change the texture or the items.ping that it's pulling the axe item from to an HD one which is actually 128 by 128 so I'm gonna go ahead and open this up does take just a minute to load because you are loading a bigger file into it but now you can see I now have an HDX now I have texture interpolation on so it actually looks pretty good but let me show you what it looks like without texture interpolation on you can see if I get close it is pixelated and I guess that's the Minecraft look but if you're going for smoother graphics you want to turn that on when you're using HD textures we can do the same thing with a block uh, let's add a uh, let's browse desktop and get the terrain and now you can see we have an HD grass block let me go ahead and turn this off one more time so you can see the difference um, it gets pixelated and whatnot which is kind of the look of Minecraft but if you want a smoother texture you can actually turn that on and it does smooth it out and looks a lot nicer. Now you are going to want to turn off this default ground here because it's the old 16 by 16 version and it kind of looks silly blurred um, but this is mostly used for the updated uh, or not updated for HD textures that you may use. Um, now let's get to these two sliders here you've got the size of the ground you can bring this all the way out to 256 by 256 which just makes this a huge thing to be working on now but do realize this is going to cause more work on your processor so if you don't have one that can't already keep up I wouldn't suggest going this big and then the quality slider so let me go ahead and add a light to show you what this is affecting uh, let's bring in the light let's change position of the light let's bring it up alright now let's turn down the lights oops and we'll keep it its base color now if I come in here to the settings and change the quality if I turn it all the way down the light does reach out to a bigger kind of diamond looking shape um, but if I go ahead and turn the quality up it makes it more of a focused area light um, so it's a higher quality it's a lower air it I guess yeah it's a lower area but it looks I guess more natural since it's not like this huge triangle um, so that's what the quality slider is for but do realize that does cause lag um, well not lag it, it does cause more work on your processor if your processor cannot already keep up so that looks 
That looks actually pretty good. It's somewhat natural. It's got kind of the bows and curves in it as the light reaches out across the ground. Okay, so that is the settings tab. So let's move on to the new blocks that were added. Let's go ahead and clean up our library here. If you just select add, and now we have a new um, selection in the drop down list, which is special block. We've got the chest, large chest, lever, let me zoom in on these, um, lever, which you can, let me show you this, you can move the handle by selecting that, you can pull it off, rotate it, or whatever, um, animating the chest, let me show you that one real quick, um, you can select the top, and rotate it. Same thing applies with the large chest piston. Works the same way. You select the extension and you can move that out. That's already all weird and rotated from the chest, but you get the point. Uh, let's look at sticky piston, 3D arrows. This isn't a flat arrow, it's a 3D arrow. And um, the boat and the minecart. So just a couple new special blocks that can be moved, can be bent um, to help you out with your animations. So let me go ahead and show you probably the most anticipated feature of Minimator 0.6.1 and that is the bendy limbs that so many people have been requesting. Now if you look here on the character you can see that there is a little right angle sign next to his left leg, right leg, left arm, and right arm. That means these have a bendable joint in them. So if I go ahead and have the right arm selected you're going to now see the bending drop down, let me close these, the bending drop down slider box. Um, you can either click and drag or you can right click put in a manual input of a decimal point. So for example, if I wanted it to bend 50%, I wouldn't put 50 in. That puts it all the way to 100. I would do 0 0.50, and that does a 50% bend. Um, or I can just manually slide it back and forth. Now, it does currently only bend in one direction, but that's not going to stop you from making it bend other directions. You just got to think about this. If I take his right arm, take the rotation, let's change the Z to negative 90. Now if I bend it, it bends out, and you can do this little kind of quirky wave like hi guys, or if I go ahead and turn that in, he can now, let's rotate his arm up, like so. So now he can hold things to his chest, kind of do like the gorilla, Tarzan thing going on, um, whatever you want to do. Same thing with the legs, now I don't know why you would ever want to make the legs bend in the directions but the default is bending back just simply slide it get it going looks very nice so in a nutshell that are that is all or these are get my grammar correct these are all the new features of the new Minimator version and I think the biggest things that we should be thankful for is the import animation and the bendy limbs you can now merge your animations you can now bend the limbs it really brings up to the next level of a 3D animating program. Um, I give tip my hat off to David for working so hard and so diligently on this for us. Um, if you want to thank him, go ahead and just visit his website or the forums, contribute to the community, contribute to his website. Um, any way you can, I'm sure he will appreciate. Um, and like I said, I will be coming out with some more specific tutorials on all of these new features that I've kind of flown by because I don't want this to be a very long video although it probably already is, um, but that's just kind of the quick overview of all the new features. Um, I'll, oh, one more button I forgot to go over was the visit the forums. So if you, don't, if you haven't joined the forums and want to join the forums, just click on this little chat bubble here at the top and it takes you to the forums. Um, there you can uh, find animation teams, get cool downloads that people have made, uh, like facial rigs, schematics, things like that. Anyway, this is Ski Dude. Rate, subscribe, thumbs up. Any questions in the comments below? Look for some more tutorials in the coming weeks for specific parts. And I will catch you guys later. Peace.